Being able to control anything that is rendered on the screen is one of the biggest selling points of Flutter. And we can do this mostly with the widgets that is already built in and using things like the custom painter. If we want to take things a bit further, so let's say the widget doesn't really exist and custom painter doesn't really fit our use case. Well, one thing is that widgets doesn't actually paint anything on the screen. That is what render objects does. So a lot of those widgets that you are using is already behind the scenes using render objects instead. So now it's time to deep dive into how we can use a render object. Now to create render objects, we have access to three different ones to make it a bit easier. We have the single child render object widget, the multi child render object widget, as well as the leaf render object widget. Now in this video we're going to use the leaf render object widget to create this design. Now if you really want to dive deep into these kind of things, I recommend this video by Creative Creator or maybe not. He has a very deep knowledge of these kind of things and has created some amazing videos. I also got this specific video inspiration from this Medium post. So if you want to learn more about this as well, you can check out that post. And before we begin, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe, as well as checking out the full written guide over at robertbrinhager.com. So here we have a normal application where I've just deleted the counter example. We'll start off by having a container in a center and giving it some width. I will also have a background color of brown, as well as creating the progress bar. Now this one requires a dot color, thumb color and as well as the thumb size. Now to create this class we have to extend the leaf render object widget. So here we just have the variables and the constructor for that. This will help us configure a render object without any children. So we have some methods we have to override. The first one being the create render object. The purpose of this one is to return our real progress bar which we will define with prefixing it by render. And the same as before, we just pass the dot color, thumb color, and thumb size. Now that will handle creating the actual render object, but now we also have to handle when values are updated. So we override the update render object and set the type to render progress bar. So here we just make sure to change those actual values in the render object. We will also add debug field properties with our different variables. And this will help in the tooling when we want to see the different values. Now we can go ahead and create our render progress bar class. Now for this one, we will extend the render box, which will render a object in a 2D Cartesian coordinate system. So in simple terms, just rendering something that we want to paint. Now we're going to use private variables for the dot color, the thumb color, as well as the thumb size. The reason for this is that we actually want a setter for these values. So in case if we set the value which is already is, we don't do anything, but if it is different, we will assign it and then mark needs paint. And this just marks that we need to repaint this actual render box. To not take too long of that time here, I will just copy this one and change out the variable names to represent the different variables we actually have. So now anytime we actually change these values, we will repaint this render box, which is crucial for actually being able to change values and it will re-render. Now another crucial part is that we have to override the perform layout. This one will determine the size of this render box. The parent, well the container, had a constraint of 500 pixels to the width. We are going to say that this child should take the full width of the parent. Which means that this render box will always try to be the same width as the parent. For the desired height, we are going to just take the thumb size and take that as a height. Now when we have the height and width, we are going to create a size variable. So when instantiating a size, we just pass the desired width as well as the desired height. Now the reason we do this is because we can set the size coming from the render box. And now we can just set the constraints to this desired height and width, which is now the sized variable. And this is actually a key part of the explanation of constraints go down, sizes go up and parents sets position. I will put a link to the documentation regarding this. Getting a good understanding of this will pretty much handle all of the design and layout issues that you will have in the future. Now the next overriding method we have to set is the paint method. So first off we just create a variable for the canvas and the next part is a bit more tricky but what we have to do is first save the canvas. 
The reason for this is that we can later on restore the canvas and the canvas is everything on the screen that we're going to paint. And to start off, this is actually the full window. But what we want to do is actually translate it and making it the width and height of the parent widget, which means the width of 500 pixels and the height of the actual thumb size. So we're just going to pass the offset.dx as well as the offset.dy. And right now we don't actually get any compile warnings or exceptions anymore and we can see our widget or parent painted. So right off now we haven't actually painted anything, that's why we only have the parent shown. So before we actually paint, we have to create the paint. We're going to start off with the paint we're going to use for the dots. To do that we instantiate a paint object and set the color to our dot color. After that we set the stroke cap to round as well as the stroke width to 4. We will go ahead and copy that and do the same for the actual bar paint. But we will change the color to red instead. So now we can actually go ahead and do the most exciting part which is painting. So what we're going to do first is that we want to have some spacing between the paints that we are going to add. So to do this we just take the width of the full container and then just divide that by 10. Now we can go ahead and loop 11 times. The reason for this is because we actually want to paint 11 times. So for every dot or line that we are going to paint we're going to define a upper and a lower paint. This is going to define where we start painting, meaning the upper point, down to the lower point. We do this by defining a offset and then adding spacing times i and then we can set the height. And we want it to paint pretty far down, so we're going to take size.height and do it times 0 0.75. If we add 0, that is going to be on the top of the container. Now we go ahead and define the lower point, which is also going to be a offset. This is going to be almost identical to the upper point. The only difference is that we are going to take the full size.height, meaning that we will paint to the bottom of the container. And now we can just start by drawing the actual line that we want to draw. To do this, you can call the canvas object and then call draw line. There we pass in the upper point and the lower point, meaning in point 1 and point 2. The only thing left now is actually passing the paint that we want to use for painting and we're going to use the dot paint we created. So here we can see the container and now we'll see all of the dots that we have painted out. So the next part is that we want to make the first point, middle point and the last point be a bit taller. And this is probably easier than you think, so let's head back to the code. So before we actually start drawing each line or dot, we're going to add a if case. And we're going to make it so that if i of modulus of 5 is equal to 0, meaning the first one, the middle one and the last one. So if we are in any of those iterations, we're going to change the upper point to be a bit higher up. And as the upper point of this one is 0, we're just going to take size.height times 0.25 meaning from the top and then 25% down. Now all of these points are now taller up, so we can go ahead and start with the actual thumb that we're going to create. So by scrolling up we can define a new double, let's call it current thumb value, and we're going to default it to 0.5. Now we can go down to the bottom of the paint method again and start painting that thumb. Now this thumb is just a name for it, it's actually used a circle, so first off we define the paint for it. And this is just going to be paint where we set the color to the thumb color. Now in the horizontal plane, meaning to the left or right, we have to define where in that spectrum it's going to be. So we're going to define a thumb dx value. And we are going to take our value, which is from the value 0 to 1, and just times that with the size.width. That means that this thumb dx will represent the pixels from the left to right where it's going to contain in the parent. So now we have the horizontal view of where this paint or thumb is going to be. Now we just have to define a offset for the vertical and horizontal value together. So the horizontal one being the thumb.dx and the vertical one being in the middle, so size.height divided by 2. Now we can use the awesome methods on the canvas called draw circle. 
This used requires the offset, which means the center variable. The radius, which you get by taking the thumb size divided by 2. And then in the end, just passing the paint. So now if you remember in the beginning, we used canvas.translate. So now we will just restore that value. So now looking at the website, we can see those first value, middle value and last value of the dots are actually taller than the other ones. And when we save our changes, we will also see that thumb button. Now we can't actually do anything with that because we don't handle any hit values for the render object. But before we handle that, we are going to draw one more line, which is going to be from the far left to the actual dot. To make it seem like a bar for the value or the percentage that we are going to drag that thumb. So the first point is just going to be to the far left in the middle in the vertical axis. And the point 2 is just going to be the middle of the vertical axis and then the same position as the thumb. Now the order of where you start drawing and when you stop drawing is important because if we switch position of the canvas draw line and draw circle, it means that the line would be above the circle which we don't want, we want it to be behind it. So now looking back at the website we can see that that line is drawn and now you can see why we want it to be behind that thumb or circle. But now let's start by handling how we can drag that thumb. We'll define a horizontal drag gesture recognizer and just calling it underscore drag. We're going to override a hit test self and set it to true. This just means that the render object is handling hit detection. And to handle that hit detection or handle event, we're going to override the handle event method. Now in the if case, we can just set it to if we want to handle the point down event or any other kind of event. We will handle the point down event and just calling the drag variable and just adding a pointer event. Now we didn't actually instantiate that underscore drag variable, but that is done in the constructor. So let's do that here by just assigning it to a horizontal drag gesture recognizer. Now on this object, we have two different methods that we actually care about. The first one being on start and the second one being on update. Both of these give a parameter that we're going to call details. The first one is a drag start details and the other one is a drag update details. We're going to use them in the same way. So we're going to define a method to handle both of them. We're going to call this update thumb position. Don't be scared that it's red right now. That's just because we haven't implemented the actual method. We're going to pass the local position coming from the details. And we're going to do the same in the on update. Now if we scroll to the bottom, we can start by implementing that method called update fun position. We're going to take a offset, which we call local position. I'm going to add some comments here so you can read through it and get a better understanding if you didn't follow. But we need to clamp that horizontal position. So we'll define a new variable called dx. We'll take the local position dot dx and just clamp it between a lower point and a upper point. The lower point is far left, which is zero, and the upper point is to the far right, which is size.width. Now we don't care about all of the different decimals that we will get because we want it to actually snap to those dots that we created. And they are on like 10% and 20 or 40%. So we'll define a variable and then parse that value that we get. So dx divided by size.width and we can now do two string as fixed and we'll get a one decimal value. So now this current value will be from zero to one, which is 0% to 100% for the actual slider. We now need to just call mark needs paint and mark needs semantic update. Now looking at the website, we can see our slider. And now when we drag this, we can see that it's snapping to all of those dots or lines that we have created. So just to spice this up a bit, we're going to make all of those red when we actually pass it with the slider. To do that, we go up to where we actually draw all of those lines. And we're going to define a if case. We're going to select just either the upper point or the lower point of that current iteration. We're going to take the width of that offset and just say that if it's less than or equals to the current thumb value, of course, we have to times that with the size.width to get the pixels for it. 
but if it's less than or equals to the value of where the thumb is, we're going to use draw some more lines on top of the lines we already have. And these lines we're just going to make red instead. To make this simple, we're just going to reduce the bar paint in this case. And of course, don't forget to make an else case for the other draw line or else we will just draw over what we actually just did. So before looking at the example, we'll just remove the brown color for the parent container. And now we can actually see the whole implementation. So here we have the slider, which is snapping to all of those points and it's making them red if we pass them and blue if we haven't. And now if we change the width of the parent container to 400, we can see that it scales correctly. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you really liked it, consider supporting me either on Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon, where I have a bunch of different perks. And of course, if you want to see more of this kind of content, make sure to click one of the videos coming up on the screen right now. And I will see you in the next one.